Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here and we are tackling steak today. Now, a lot of you have written in asking how to tell whether or not your steak is cooked perfectly and to your desired doneness. Well, today I'm gonna to share with you all of the tricks and tips in making steak at home and we're making a delicious recipe, which is steak au poivre. Let's get started. So to get started with this recipe in particular, I'm going to start with the seasonings. And steak au poivre, it's very, very simple, you guys. It really relies on poivre, which is pepper. So I have some black peppercorns here, nothing special. You can get these in the grocery store. But one thing we wanna do is we want to coarsely kind of grind them. Um, it's called the butcher's grind. You can sometimes find this in your spice aisle at your supermarket or a specialty market, but I like to do it at home because I feel like you really get a great amount of flavor and spice that comes out of crushing your own peppercorn. So I'm using a meat mallet today to do this. Use the flat side of your meat mallet, not necessarily the textured side. This one here, which is used to break up the muscle fibers in meats. Um, so the flat side and just coarsely crush your black peppercorns and crushing them by hand provides a good amount of texture, which will be really delicious in the end. So this looks pretty good. You can see there's a good amount of texture. There's some coarse pieces, there's some finer pieces, and that's really what you're looking for. I'm gonna just put this in a bowl and add some salt. And this is the seasoning, here it is, this is it. You don't need anything fancy. I'm gonna mix this together with my fingers and now it's time to season the steak. Now today I'm using a strip steak, also known as a Kansas City steak or a New York strip steak. You could also use um, another cut, your favorite cut. This is a ribeye steak here, which is further along on the loin, closer to the shoulder. So it typically has more fat that runs through the meat itself. Um, it's actually my preferred steak because I like extra fat. Now, before we season up with our peppercorn mixture, I'm gonna take a little bit of vegetable oil Oil. You want to use either a canola oil here, a safflower oil, grapeseed oil, any of those neutral oils that can go up to a really high temperature um, and just lightly coat the meat in the vegetable oil before sprinkling with the peppercorn salt blend. And you want to be pretty generous here. Again, this is the only seasoning that we're using on the steak itself. And it's really thick. This is about an inch and a half in thickness. So you, you can be pretty liberal with your seasoning um, because again, you need to season all of the meat, about a pound in total. So all of the sides. And one of the things that's really important when you're cooking steak, whether it's out on a grill or I'm doing it indoors today, is to bring it out to room temperature. So pull it out of the refrigerator at least 30 minutes before you're ready to cook it. And what this will do is will help to promote um, even cooking. You won't get what we like to call in the test kitchen the bullseye effect and that's where the inside of the, the steak or the meat that you're cooking is really red and rare um, but the outside is gray and oftentimes stringy. Now I have a cast iron skillet here this is about 10 inches and I'm going to take a little bit of that vegetable oil and put it in the base of the pan. Now this has been preheating over medium high heat for about three to four minutes and the steak is gonna go in and this is gonna cook on direct heat all the way through. This is the recipe as it's written. Now, if you had something that was thicker, if you had maybe a piece of meat that was two inches in thickness, you would wanna use the direct heat method and then also finishing the cooking in indirect, which would be, in this case, we would put this in the oven. So the steak is gonna cook for about 10 to 12 minutes in total, and we're gonna flip it about halfway through. So at about five minutes, once you have a really nice crust that has developed on the bottom of the steak. So it's been about five minutes and our steak has developed a seriously nice crust to it. Look at how beautiful that is. So now it's time to flip the steak and it's gonna cook for another five minutes on this next side. Now, while that's cooking, I'm gonna prep the ingredients for um, a wonderful pan sauce that's really kind of traditional with a steak au poivre, and that is a shallot cognac and cream sauce. So I have one small shallot here that I'm just gonna peel and I'm gonna finely mince the shallot. Now, if you didn't have shallot on hand, uh, you could certainly use uh, regular onion. I actually like maybe even a sweet onion here in this application. I think that would be really nice. If you were a fan of garlic, you could certainly use garlic here as well. It's really up to you. I just like to cut them in half and then 
as you would an onion, you just want to glide your knife down, creating, you know, almost matchsticks that are kind of bonded here to the end of the shallot, the root end. And then you're going to go kind of crosswise into nice, fine pieces. And repeat the process. All right, guys, so we've been cooking the steak on the bottom for about five minutes, and then within the last two minutes, I'm really just searing the fat cap, the edge of the steak, where there's that nice kind of wrapping of, of really tasty fat. And you just wanna do that for one to two minutes. And now we're looking for an internal temperature. So for a steak like this, I'd like to serve it medium rare, and that's anywhere between 125 degrees to 130 degrees. And the way that you check the temperature is by inserting a digital thermometer in the center of the steak, and it should climb up to about 125 degrees. So now I'm gonna pull the steak off the heat. I'm gonna turn the heat off now, um, but I'm gonna put this on a plate, and I'm going to loosely cover this with some tin foil, and I'm gonna allow the steak to rest for about 15 minutes. Be generous here. Uh, you really, you don't wanna carve this up or cut it up right off the heat. Otherwise, all of the juices that are in this steak are gonna kind of come right out and you'll end up with something that's dry in the end. So loosely tent it with some aluminum foil. Uh, you don't want to curl the foil under the plate because what that's gonna do is it's gonna encourage steam to build up and all of that wonderful crust that you've created in this high, high heat pan is gonna get nice and soggy. Now in this pan, I'm gonna add the shallots to it now. Uh, you could wipe this out if you wanted to, but I really want all of those wonderful bits of peppercorn, those toasted black peppercorn pieces because that's gonna add really great flavor to our sauce in the end. Take a wooden spoon, stir this around. I'm gonna enrich the pan juices that are here and a little bit of the fat with some butter. So this is two tablespoons of unsalted butter. And I'm gonna turn the heat on, a medium heat, and just cook the shallots until they're nice and translucent and tender. So the shallots look nice and tender, and this is really fragrant. I'm gonna add some cognac. Now I'm using a quarter of a cup of cognac. Now you could use brandy, which cognac is a type of brandy. You could use a little bit of bourbon here if you were a fan of bourbon. Any sort of dark spirit would work really well here. You could also use wine, uh, but cognac is kind of classic. So this is going in. I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit and I wanna reduce this down. I wanna get rid of kind of that harsh alcohol flavor and really leave the delicious sweetness from the cognac. So once this mixture is nice and syrupy and you can kind of glide your spoon around the skillet and it leaves a trail for maybe just a half a second or two, that's when we're gonna start to add the rest of the ingredients. Now, I have Worcestershire sauce here, which is one of my favorite pantry ingredients to use in so many different things. It's great with pan sauces. It's also delicious in salad dressings and vinaigrettes. So Worcestershire, about a tablespoon, and I'm also going to add three quarters of a cup of chicken stock. Now, if you have chicken stock in your freezer that you've made from scratch, use that here because that is going to make this extra delicious, but you could certainly use store-bought as well. Turn the heat up now to the highest possible setting, and I wanna reduce this down until it's nice and thick and viscous, and that will take about five minutes. All right, the sauce here, it looks amazing. It smells even better. Now, one ingredient that I'm not adding today, but you certainly could do this at home, um, is some green peppercorns. It's uh, a traditional kind of addition to the sauce of steak au poivre, um, and it adds a nice brininess to the sauce. To this mixture, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of heavy cream, and heavy cream here is just gonna enrich the sauce even further. Stir this together, and I'm just gonna turn off the heat here and let this sit. And now it's time to carve the strip steak. So this has been resting for about 10 minutes. I'm actually going to put this right on my cutting board and take the juices, pour them right into your pan sauce here. It will make it even more delicious. Give that a stir. And with a nice sharp knife, I'm using a carving knife here. I'm gonna slice this into maybe quarter inch slices. This meat is kind of rosy pink all the way through. You can see that it's not overcooked and stringy around the edges. Look at that, it's perfect. This is, I'd say, just perfectly medium rare. I'm gonna put this on 
my plate, just a few slices. I like to serve this with a little bit of peppery arugula, or this is watercress, which is really nice. A sprinkling of salt, which is really important. Whenever you're carving any sort of meat, give it a sprinkle of salt. The final touch, you could serve this on the side if you wanted to, and some people like sauce on their steak, some people do not. I personally do. So I'm gonna take a spoonful and just go right over our perfectly cooked shrimp steak here. Here you have it, steak 101. You know all of the tricks and tips in making sure you end up with the most delectable steak in the end. As always, if you have any kitchen conundrums, please reach out to us using the hashtag kitchen conundrums. We love to hear from you. Enjoy. And as always guys, click like and subscribe.